Yo, what's up everyone? This is Kaiser War here, and I felt like talking about Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII, which is the final game in the XIII trilogy. Final Fantasy XIII as a whole is a series of Final Fantasy games that people don't like. I know a lot of people hate XIII as a whole, and personally for me, I like XIII. I really like these games. They're not perfect. I understand the criticisms. There are some stupid decisions in these games. Some of the characters kind of fall off. I don't, I, I can understand all the bad shit, but playing the game and still enjoying it, I, I'm kind of glad that I don't have the people who like rag on certain games, like get that spit in my head. I kind of like that because I can actually freely enjoy these games without having to hear people's outside stuff. I mean, it's good to hear other people's opinions. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm not gonna let my opinions get affected by other people's like that. I still like 13 and all the games in um, this trilogy. So, I guess I usually start my videos off with these little history lessons. I think this is kind of a common thing now. I just start, like, my videos were like, hey, this is my history with the game. Uh, I can't really say much about 13 because I never really followed 13 up to its development. All I know is when the game came out, I didn't get a chance to get it until like a year later, right? <laughs> I didn't get a chance to get it until a year later because I didn't have a PS3 at the time. I was still having a PS2 and I played a lot of Final Fantasy X and X2 again and again and again and again. I didn't have 12 at that time. I really wish I had. I never owned the original PS2 version of 12 and seeing how slow that game was, I was like, oh shit, thank God. I didn't own PS2 version of Final Fantasy XII. But, but seriously though, um, I liked 13 then. I was kind of like, I wasn't like, I didn't like it as much as I do now, but I was pretty indifferent to it back then. But I remember hearing all my friends who were also Final Fantasy fans rag on this game. They hated it. They were severely disappointed. They did not like how the game turned out. They did not like the characters. They did not like the music. They did not like just the gameplay, just anything, you know? And that's just, that's, that's something that, funny enough, carries over to this very day. It's just, it's insane how a lot of people still hate 13 after all these years. And I can understand that. You know, it's a game that you guys were looking forward to and just felt let down by. I can understand that. But personally, for me, I like it. And over time, I only grew to like it because 13 is not that bad. I just want to say that right now. Again, my opinion, every I can understand everyone else's opinions. They don't like the games, stuff like that. Fair enough. But my opinion is that the game's not that bad. It really isn't. A lot of people just kind of over, a lot of people really overblown the kind of stuff about 13, which is, you know, again, my opinion. Um, but anyway, moving on from that, I like 13. Then we can move on to 13 too. 13 2 is a weird game to talk about because, you know, they listen to the criticism about trying to expand some things, like especially the linearity. The linearity of 13 was one of the main sticking points. And while I don't have personally have a problem with it, I can understand the problems with it. You know, the game is, uh, is I can't call it a walking simulator, but you are just going from one end of a room, of one end of a long hallway to another. That's, that's pretty much the game as it is. And honestly, like, it does get kind of like a big issue when you're trying to like do random encounters and you're stuck between two enemies and you can't escape them because that's how the game works. And that can suck, I can admit that. But 13.2 was a way to fix these criticisms. And honestly, 13.2 has a lot more content and a lot more replayability. A lot of weird DLC choices, like with Staz, for example. I don't know why they left him out of the game just to put him in DLC. Same goes for Lightning, who barely has a presence in 13, despite being on the goddamn box art. And on top of that, she's also barely seen, but you can actually get her as a DLC character whatever but anyway 13 2 it's it's it has amazing music the game looks nice even to this day though the graphics did take a hit from 13 even though they're using the same graphics engine a lot of things take a hit and the game quality kind of gets lower and lower by the time you like after 13 still looks good to this very day 13 is a really high quality ps3 game and just i just like how every like because because how every game just comes out like very shortly after the other, it's insane. But 13-2, I liked it. The music's amazing. Uh, Kai's is amazing as a villain. Uh, the exploring different timelines is actually pretty interesting. The story did take a hit, I will admit, but Noel is actually a pretty good character. Sucks they didn't do much with Sarah that like, I wanted her to, because you feel like Sarah would be more important, but Noel and Kai's were done pretty well. I like those two characters. So moving on from 13-2, we have Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 13. And I feel like people were, a lot of people were exhausted by 13 at this time because a lot of people were just kind of burnt out 13. People didn't like the original, a lot of people didn't like the original 13. I know it did well in Japan, but a lot of people overseas were just, you know, done, you know? I don't know how many people in Japan felt about it, but I know the game was pretty well liked over there. But I can understand why people were just exhausted with 13 at this point, and that's why they probably didn't cop. Uh, Lightning Returns, but I did. I actually got the game on launch because I was actually really, you know, prepared to like, you know what? I like 13. I know a lot of people aren't gonna like Lightning Returns, so let me try. And I really liked Lightning Returns. Yeah, the story 
it, it, the story isn't as good as it should be. Because honestly, you know, I personally like the story of 13. Yeah, it's told in like the weirdest way possible. Same goes for 13 too and Lightning Returns. They they have a good foundation for a story there. They just don't tell it in the great way. And, you know, you got the best story in the world, but if you don't tell it right, you know, you kind of just lose people. And I can understand why people hate that. Uh, but I like the uh, gameplay of Lightning Returns. Um, but because they change so much about Lightning Returns, right? Lightning Returns feels like a completely different game from 13 2. Because you can definitely look at 13 2 and say, oh yeah, 13 2 is basically a working off the foundation of the original game, right? But with Lightning Returns, everything's completely different. Yeah, it's still same enemies and whatnot, and, but they're, they're in a different context than even Lightning is because Lightning's solo. She's by herself. She's You're playing only as Lightning and you have to customize that one character. And I like the way that they handle that game. Now, I want to talk about some small points in between the game because I have to bring up, you know, the things that make up Lightning Returns because I have to talk about it because these are the main sticky points that some people have. So one thing I wanted to talk about in regards of Lightning Returns is the Doomsday Clock. So the Doomsday Clock is a mechanic in Lightning Returns. Basically, the day the, the world's going to end in 13 days. So Lightning has to go around, save the souls of the people still living there. They've been living there for like 500 years, which is funny to me because they've been stuck, basically stuck in perpetual limbo for, for 500 years, right? So Lightning has to go around, save their souls, and put it in a tree to extend the days. And, you know, everybody's souls will be brought over to the new world once this one goes kaboom and a new world will be created by the god Bunavelza. So the time limit is one of the main sticking points for people in this game, right? A lot of people just don't understand why, you know, exactly. And for me personally, the time is very generous. You can complete everything and still have plenty of days left, right? Honestly, the time is pretty generous, but at first, you don't know that. If you're playing Lightning Returns for the first time, everything is confusing. Everything is confusing in Lightning Returns. They give you tutorials and everything like that. They'll tell you what the rundown is, but like, you're constantly on stress most of the time because like, you have to do side quests to gain, you know, get your stats up. Time is a factor in this game. It's that kind of stuff. But the time limit, I honestly don't have an issue with. The, one of the things I do have an issue with with time is some of the quests, because some of those quests are time sensitive. You have to be in a very exact time in order to get it done. And sometimes they don't even tell you that. Sometimes you don't have to straight up guess, right? But I believe that the time is very generous. Because I played this game enough to know that the time, like the time mechanic isn't that bad, right? You have plenty of time to get stuff done. But the one thing I find interesting is that as time goes on, the enemies in the game get stronger, right? And like, that's the funny thing about it is if you waste time, you know, not doing anything and you have to do those mandatory like boss battles, those boss battles will be stronger the later time goes on. And I think that's really funny. <laughs> you're like, okay, stop dilly dallying around. You gotta do your shit. If you don't do your shit, you're gonna be dealing with like really powerful plus enemies later in the game. You don't wanna do that. Um, so yeah, I think the time management thing isn't that bad. It really isn't. I've gotten used to it, mostly because I played the game so many different times, but like I've gotten used to it. But I understand like someone not being a fan of that. Cause I'm not a fan of time in video games. I get stressed, you know, by that kind of stuff real easily. Cause I don't like being rushed to do anything. That kind of stuff. So yeah. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the side quests. Now, the side quests in Lightning Returns is pretty much the entire game. <laughs> because in order to get stats, right, you need to like do the side quests. You have to do a lot of side quests in order to boost lightning up so she'll be strong enough to fight the enemies in the game and then and eventually the final boss. Now, a lot of people hate this. A lot of people hate being forced to do side quests in order to get stats. Now, I can understand people be pissed about that. I can totally understand that because fighting enemies in the game, there is essentially for stat wise, for leveling up, there's no point. There is a point to fighting enemies in the game, but there's no point to do it if you want stats up. For fighting enemies, you need to collect items for those quests and you gain EP back. But I can understand you're just, you, you can't avoid fighting enemies. There are some you have to mandatory, like there are mandatory to fight and there are some you have to do to collect items. So it's not all bad really, but I think it has a good balance between the quest and the monster fighting. Cause like, again, the side quests are all there, but the, the side quests aren't that bad because I personally believe as you're walking around the world, you're going picking up items and junk like that. You're already doing some of those side quests without even thinking about it. And then when you go up to like the person who wants the quest, you've already done it, right? 
a lot of them do be like that. And there's even like a board where you could do like extra side quests in order to gain items. And again, like in the game, uh, sorry, gain stats. And the funny thing about it is some, some most of the time you'll have the items on hand already from killing monsters and going around the world. And then those extra side quests will just give you extra stats so you won't be doing main story side quests all the time. So I think the game has a decent balance of that. I've never at one point been struggling to do something because of the side quests, honestly, because I knew I had to go do them. Granted, again, some of those are time sensitive and they can screw you over. And I can understand that, but honestly, it's not that bad. Now, like, plus, like, the entire game is not exactly just side quests because there are some things that balance it out, but I can understand people being pissed about that because that is a drastic change because you got all these enemies and monsters in the other world and you don't even need to fight any of them. You don't need to, but do some side quests, you kind of need to, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Another point I want to talk about is the Skamata and Garbs. Now, the Skamata and Garbs, mostly I'm just going to bring up, we'll talk about the Garbs. The Garbs are outfits that Lightning can um, wear in the game that essentially modify her stats, gives her new abilities, and changes her appearance. Lightning Returns, when you really think about it, it's such a weird game because Lightning, you know, the ultra serious, badass Lightning can wear something silly as a Makote costume from Final Fantasy XIV, which I find really hilarious. And there's a bunch of throwback costumes like Final Fantasy VII, like with Cloud and the Buster Sword, uh, Aerith, you can wear a Yuna's 13, uh, 10-2 outfit, that kind of stuff. Now, granted, all the outfits I just mentioned were DLC, but hey, it's good DLC, especially for that Cloud outfit. Like, that's literally game-breaking. Like, for real. And I like I like the idea I like the uh, variety of the guards. A lot of them go into deep fan service territory, which is weird to see on Lightning. And some of them just like look unpleasant to look at because Lightning is just not the kind of person that should be modeling certain kinds of clothes. Which is funny to me. This game is kind of appropriate because Lightning has been essentially turned into a model by Square Enix, which I find really funny. <laughs> but I think the garbs are a really cool mechanic. And it actually calls back to Final Fantasy X-2. X-2 is a really damn good combat system with the dress spears and everything. And I think Lightning Returns kind of perfects that. For one, with the... Uh, with the um, with the garbs, you can only equip three at once. You can have, like, you know, side garbs where you can, like, you know, like, they're not like recipes, they're more like side things where you can like, oh, if you don't want to wear this set of garbs, now you can just wear another one. And some of those uh, garbs have really cool abilities. Some of them have locked abilities, which you can't change out, but those some of those locked abilities are actually really good. And on top of that, they modify their stats, and hell, you can even change the color, too. Because, like, I think that's pretty cool. Like, if I have a pink dress, you know, if I'm wearing, like, a pink dress as lightning, I'm like, eh, I don't like that color, but I like this dress. And I could change it to, like, black or something. I'm like, oh, shit, I can do that. That's so freaking awesome. That kind of shit. <laughs> uh, but I like the idea of the garbs as well. And the skamata, where you can change your, um, um, change your techniques to fit that garb, is actually pretty cool. Because as I mentioned before, some garbs have lock skills, but there's some who don't have lock skills. There's some who have really good stats. And on top of that, like... The one thing about the um, Skamata I like so much is that you could customize it to your will. Like, you could have a Skamata that has all attacks, or you have a Skamata that has all defensive moves. Like, you know, well, not the defensive moves, I guess I could say, like, debuffs and stuff like that. Or you have one that does all magic. My preference is that I have one, uh, one Skamata for debuffs, because debuffs are very important. And honestly, debuffs work way better in this game than they ever did in the other 13 games. Because with Lightning, uh, with the first 13, uh, 13 games, like 13 and 32, when you want to use a debuff on the enemy, you have to cast that debuff a bunch of times to pull it off. But in Lightning Returns, you cast it once, boom, there you go. You have to do it like a bunch of times over and over again just to make sure the debuff sticks. And I think that's one of the one things I hate about 13. But with Lightning Returns, you just, hey, I, I want to cast Deep Protect. Boom, it's there. I want to cast D-Shell. Boom. I want to cast Dispel. Boom. Easy. Right? And one thing I like is that, like, I can customize this to my will, you know? I like having a schemata for pure attacks with elemental stuff so I can, you know, take advantage of the enemy's weakness. I have a schemata for debuffs only in schemata for magic. So, you know, it just keeps things balanced out. I think that's, for me personally, the best way to play it. So you have, like, you know, easy access to all of your stuff. I think that's pretty good. Because you're working with one character this time. And I think that what they've done so much for just one character. I really wish this mechanic came back in something else. But I think they did a really good job on Lightning's last outing. I think it's pretty cool. Because this whole Skamata and Garb thing is a really interesting idea. I personally like it. I know a lot of people made fun of it because, hey, it's 
lightning cosplaying, but you know, I mean, outside of the silliness and outside of the silliness you can see in cutscenes, I think the mechanic is good and it makes the battles really fun and, and more engaging. Because I know a lot of people complain about 13 and 13 too, and it's like, oh, we hate auto battle. Rah, 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 rah. Even though I personally believe that, I feel like when people say 13 can play itself, I feel like they're just talking out their ass because there's no way that game can play itself. That game, that game has given me a lot of tough boss battles and a lot of hard problems. I don't know what the hell you're playing with, but you're not playing the game right if you think the game can play itself. I, I call bullshit on that one. Uh, but yeah, I personally believe they did an amazing job with the gameplay of this game in regards to combat. I think that's really awesome. Another thing I want to talk about in regards to Lightning Returns is the locations. Lightning Returns' this world is split into like four sections essentially, like four big open zones. One's Yusnan, one's Luxarian, the other's Dead Dead Dunes, and the final one is the Wildlands. Now, I like these areas both in vibe and appearance. Even though I mentioned before earlier in the video that like the graphics of the 13 trilogy kind of degrade over time, I believe they did a good job with the art direction and the areas in these games. For example, we have Yusnan, which is basically a big, big party city, really. A big party city where everyone just are like, you know, partying the last days that they have on this world. And I think that's kind of cool. Like, I like the way the place looks because it reminds me of like some big festival areas I've been to when I was younger. It's insane. And then you have like Luxarian, which is like this, like this gothic European style city. I don't know how to describe it but it's insane it looks cool i think the little things in the dead dunes make up its you know l world for example there's like this small like cathedrals you can go to there's like a bunch of tombs you can go into there's a big area where there's like an oasis and you can meet fang from final fantasy 13. Uh, she runs her own gang there and i think that's kind of cool and finally the wildlands again the i think the wildlands has the most stuff in this game there's a lot of many locations just in this woodland area which is insane right like they have they have several villages they have a village of moogles they have a farm there they have a big research camp there's a big ass temple uh, called the temple of the goddess there where you can find caius from 13 2 and they have like smaller little sections in there as well and i like the art direction of these areas they all look good I, I I really wish the time wasn't a factor um, in this game, so you can actually explore them. Because like you know, yeah, I said yeah before you have plenty of time due to the time limit, but you won't have enough time to explore every area and all the nooks and crannies unless you really go for it, right? And the one thing I really like about this game, it rewards you for doing the side quests and it expands the world because. When you do all the side quests in one area, right, they'll build a bridge where you can it'll go from Luxarian to another place. Let's say you're in Luxarian, right, and you do all the side quests there. You essentially get a bridge where you can walk across that bridge and just end up in one of the other places instead of having to fast travel everywhere. Now, granted, fast travel will be faster, but fast travel takes time. And yeah, walking around the world takes time, but having that bridge from one place to another, I think it's really cool. And plus there's a bunch of high level enemies there where you can fight them and gain EP so you can keep holding off the clock. So it also rewards you for more EP as well. So you can hold off time and do what you want by stopping time. And I don't know, I like these areas. It's fun to explore them and see what you can find. Like in the Dead Dunes, because it's so huge, they have little cactuar statues that you can talk to. You can teleport pretty much everywhere around the map. Like they have cactuar statues inside the tombs, cactuar statues near the station, cactuar statues near Fang's like little hideout. Like they have like a lot of cactuar statues because the area is just that damn big. Hell, there is a there, the, there's a boss from 13 named Atmos. And Atmos is in the desert, just dead <laughs> he's there it's insane you know that just goes to show it's like oh man if you stuck with this game you actually remember who this who these like enemies are you're like oh shit i remember like atmos has his oh, he's dead <laughs> he's just straight, he's just straight up dead and the last thing i wanted to talk about before i end off this video is the characters of 13. so like i can understand a lot of people's criticisms towards the 13 cast even though i personally like all of them yes including vanilla and hope i know a lot of people hate vanilla and hope to death but i can't bring myself to hate them they're just they're just people throwing the messed up situations hope ain't even that bad of a character i honestly don't understand like the the extreme hate towards this character i guess if you don't like him but like a lot of people just hate hope like really hate him i don't get it 
He's not even that bad. And Vanille, I don't, I don't get it either. Yeah, I can understand her voice is a little bit much, but I, I mean, she hasn't done anything to make me hate her. I think that's a good thing. They, these, these characters haven't done anything to make me hate them, so I, I think that's a good thing. Saz is awesome. Snow, I know a lot of people don't like him at all, but Snow ain't even that bad. Fang and, like, Fang and Lightning are pretty cool as well. Like, I, I just don't get it. But I can understand why. And the sad thing about the 13 cast is that their importance gets uh, dampened. That's the, I think that's the best word to use. Their importance gets dampened game by game. So in 13-2, obviously Vanille and Fang are still in the crystal that are is holding up Pulse, right? Sorry, holding up Cocoon, my bad. It's holding up Cocoon. <laughs> and so they're out of action, right? Saz is in a DLC in a goddamn casino called Xanadu, so we don't see him at all. Lightning's off fighting Caius and doing whatever she does. She's barely in the main story, so Lightning, the main character of 13, is barely used. Um, uh, Snow is there, but you only see him for one timeline, right? And it 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 it, it kind of sucks, really. You don't like it, it kind of sucks <laughs> that you they don't do anything with the 13 cast, and what they do with them is like like away from the main story. And 13-2 is mostly focused on Sarah and Noel. But I think it's more focused on Noel because he feels like the true main character of 13-2. All the story is basically focused on him, right? Kai's relationship is with him. Yule's relationship is with him. But with Sarah, you don't, she's just kind of there, you know? And that sucks, you know? She's just kind of there and then she dies. <laughs> um, but yeah, but when we then we get to Lightning Returns. Lightning Returns doesn't really bring any any like bring in any new characters, right? The one new character that really made an impact and the one that the game pretty much just like actually like shows off that means something is Lumina. And you know what? I like Lumina, right? The fact that Lumina is just Lightning's repressed childhood in human four, I think that's pretty cool as a concept character. Because when they were introduced, like when they were showing her off in trailers and shit, I was like, oh my god, why is Sarah in black? What, what, I thought Sarah was dead. Why is Sarah evil now? <laughs> but no, Sarah, like, no, it's just like it's just a like just a way to mess with your head. No, that's actually lightning, which I find really interesting. Because it implies that lightning and Sarah, like lightning had like a similar hairstyle to Sarah back in the day, which I find really cool. I think that's really cute. And like it could imply that Sarah probably like you know copied lightning as she got older, which I think that's pretty funny. Uh it's like Sarah's kind of there to remind lightning of what she used to be, and Lumina kind of drives the point further. It also goes to show that Lumina is not even like evil. She helps people, but at the same time gets in their way. She's she's pretty much a troll. She's a literal troll. And I like her, honestly. I think that Lumina is by far the most underrated part of Lightning Returns because like no one ever really talks about her. And I think she's a cool addition to the cast. But I, I like Lumina. I think that she's the best part of 13 because like, again, they don't do much with the characters that we've grown to know. Yeah, they bring them back. But like, they're kind of using the weird context. You're thinking like, okay, why would they do this, you know? Fang, I feel like is the most, is the one character that kept like herself, like her original character. Like, again, 500 years have passed, but it kind of doesn't feel like it when you think about it, you know? Like, you, you meet Saz, right? Saz has lost all hope. His son, Dodge, is asleep. He's been asleep for 500 goddamn years. Saz has lost all hope. He's depressed. And you think, this ain't Saz. I know, I know it's been 500 years, but all the other characters don't feel like it's been 500 years. It just feels like they've gone, it's just been like a year and they kind of just lost all hope, which is kind of weird. You know, like you feel like these guys who've been defying fate would kind of not be like this, but I'm, you know, whatever, right? But Saz being depressed, I mean, I can understand all good men break after a while, and I can understand Sass would be like that, but I don't know. Like, Sass was always the guy who keep everybody together. I feel like he would be the one who holds out hope the most, but, you know, again, whatever. <laughs> um, but, you know, you meet Snow again. He doesn't really have much of a reaction that Lightning's there. Noel doesn't have much of a reaction that Lightning's there. Saz doesn't have much of a reaction that Lightning. It's so weird. It feels like these characters should be more like, oh my God, Lightning, you've been gone so long. What the hell happened? 
like reminiscing, but it just doesn't feel like that. They just feel like over over, over glorified side quests. And it kind of bums me out. And then when everyone comes together in the end of the game to fight back Buna so it's just like, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like the closure I wanted with these characters. And again, I like this game, but, and I, but I admit there are problems. <laughs> There are problems. There are some issues, you know, and and I think that the fact that they just really didn't use the characters to the fullest, that's what bums me out. But, you know, I, at least Lumina came out. Granted, she's not, you know, she'll never carry over to the new world because she's literally a goddamn a, a concept, a manifestation of lightning's repressed childhood. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that that sucks. But, you know, whatever, it is what it is. You know, the game's over. But I think that's a really big sticky point. Because, like, I, I don't know. I really wish they did one more with the characters. I don't know why they didn't. They're right there, dude. I just... But, whatever. Lumina came out good. And I like 13. I like Lightning Returns. The gameplay is really good. The customization is awesome. Things could have been done better with the story. You know, way better. I don't know why they... Like, I don't know why. You know, I don't know what they were aiming for. I think 13 just, I don't know what they were trying to do with 13 in regards to the story. I, I, I think I get what they're trying to go for, but at the same time, it feels like it's all over the place and just like no cohesion between games. I mean, hell, 13 2 had a retcon a moment in 13 in order to make itself exist. I just think that's just the funniest thing ever. And 13 2 ended on a cliffhanger with Sarah dying. And yeah, I just, I don't know, man. Like, I, I can't, or the story's good. Eh. It's an eh. I think 13 probably has the strongest story. 13 2 and Lightning Returns kind of suffer for this, you know? But I believe that, like, at the very least, 13, the original 13 story was actually pretty enjoyable and it felt pretty self contained. And yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's my video on Lightning Returns. I really wanted to talk about this game because I've been wanting to talk about it for the longest time. I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed the entire 13 trilogy, even though I know most people won't. So. Yeah, that's the end of my video. I'll see you all next time. Peace out, everyone. I hope everyone's a great day. Kaiser War is out. Definitely out because I'm tired of talking. <laughs>